Hey, it's Dirty Shirt Workshop again. Today I'm repairing the fuel pump on this 1940s Kohler electric light plant. It's a 110 volt AC generator with automatic start. The fuel pump's gone bad on it. So this is, I've, I've taken the unit apart. So there's this, this deal that fits on top that also holds the uh, sediment bowl. Uh, just pop the screws out of that. And then to get these loose, just tap it real gentle on the side. The gasket will break loose so you can pull that off. <clears throat> what you've got in here uh, should be a flat rubber diaphragm. This is the old one. You can see here, right, and it's got quite a few cracks in it. And this thing's really stiff. It just, it, it's done. This happens to be a, a salvage diaphragm. My dad pulled it out of uh, some other fuel pump he had laying around. That's probably 15 years ago, so it, it's seen better days. I can't find anything that's supposed to fit this, but the beauty of these old fuel pumps is, or just old machines in general, right? They're simple, they're easy to fix. Let me bring you in here for a close-up on this. I'll show you what's going on. Here's a little side view of the pump here. So it has an eccentric that runs off the cam. I'm going to turn the motor here real quick for you. So you can see that that's going to go up and down to work as a pump, of course. Additionally, uh, for anyone who's got one of these, uh, it's off the camshaft, so it's every two turns. And with the handle straight up is top and bottom center on this thing, in case you were wondering. So what I'm going to do after I make my piece of rubber and fit it in here, I'm going to set this uh, right about there so it's level, so there's no slack in the new diaphragm. Set that in there, and then there's just this little plate that goes on here to clamp it. You bolt it down, and then you can put the top back on. Also, it's got this uh, hand pump here, so before it's running, you can basically prime the system and get fuel, so we'll go ahead and use that as well. Okay, to make the new gasket, first thing I need is really a pattern on this rubber so that I can get the holes in the right place. So all I'm going to do for that is put a light coating of grease on here. You don't need too awful much. And the main thing is keep the holes clean a little too much air all right and I should be able to lay this on here and it'll leave an imprint so I know where the holes go It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Now to cut these holes, I'm just going to use one of these tool store hole punches. When you get these, often these edges are going to be really sharp. Man, they cut you easy. So I hit that with the grinder to knock that down. All you got to do, of course, is line up on the holes and punch them out. Make sure you're doing this on a piece of wood or something a little firmer than the rubber as a sacrificial surface. And you get a nice hole. If you hit it hard enough. Alright, those all line up good. Now we got to get the center hole right. And that one actually needs to be bigger. Let me go check this punch on the, the bolt for that fuel pump. OK, 
Okay, that looks good. Now I need to cut this out. So actually, let me put this down again. I'm going to twist a little bit. Give myself a nice outline, and now I can just cut it out with scissors. As far as rubber goes, this is 1 16th of an inch thick. It's oil resistant. That looks pretty good. Let's go try it. Turn the engine until this flange here is essentially level. The reason I'm doing that is I don't want this rubber to stretch any. When I put it together, it'll be easier to line the holes up that way and it won't put any, if you, if you would stretch it too much, you might end up with a bubble in here and then the pump won't be as effective. Okay, wait, there's that flat side. I want that that way. Okay. Got to have the holes lined up when you put this on. You won't be able to turn it afterwards. Piece of crud out of there. Oh, that's right. This fiber washer, it was in here underneath this. I don't know what it was for. It doesn't make any sense that it was there. And you can see on this old one, it just dug in. It didn't really do anything, so I'm leaving it out. You know what? Let's make sure these holes stay lined up. Should only need two of these. Alright, that's good and tight. Primer lever is still going to work alright. Should be able to button this up and get it going. So I doubt there's any sort of torque specification or anything for this, but I am going to follow a typical torque pattern you would, like when you're uh, tightening wheels on your car, just going opposite each time, just to make sure I'm not warping anything. You can see the rubber starting to squeeze out already, so it doesn't take very much. Probably could have stand to trim that back. I might hit that with the razor blade later just to trim all that back. Now we can put the sediment bowl back in. It's got a nice little screen here. You put the, the fingers down, they help it stay in there. And if your gasket's shot, this is just a Buna and O ring that fits the same, just a little bit slightly smaller diameter than the bowl. For the inlet fitting, just putting some new thread tape on it. Make sure you use the yellow, that's for oil and gas. The white stuff, that'll just dissolve. It I've tried it just for fun, it doesn't work. Turn it the right way, dummy. Amazing how that works. Yeah, I've got this machine 10 or 15 years ago. I think it's 15 now. He got it at an engine show. 
the generator didn't work. Uh, the slip ring was bad on it. He made a new one. Painted it up. Of course, he worked on this fuel pump. He did a lot of things to get it running. You don't do that stuff no more, so he sent it down here. I made the new cart. It's a pretty neat machine. I like it. Had the power out for probably three or four hours back in uh, August. No, it was five hours. After two, I fired this up and ran a cord in the house to keep my refrigerator going. Okay, let's see if this primer will suck the air out of here and bring some fuel or if I'm going to have to prime it manually. Sometimes they just don't want to prime. It's hard to get that air pumped out enough that it can actually move it, especially when it ain't running. You just can't really get it back. I'm not really having any luck getting prime. Uh, I could blow some fuel through that line, but since this thing runs, just be easier to shoot some fuel down the carburetor and let it run to prime itself. So let's see how that goes. Turn my box fan on here. Two weeks later, I didn't get to do proper wrap up for you, so I'm gonna do that now. Show you how this thing's actually supposed to work normally. So I got my box fan here and kick it on. The machine should start and run. I shut the fan off, it should shut down. I gotta switch in line here to turn the load off. I'll give you a quick walk around here. Of course, this is the fuel pump that I just repaired. Got your spark plugs and all that. Uh, there's actually a drain cock here for the coolant, so that's pretty slick. Uh, people, apparently a lot of people would use these in their fishing cabins up in Minnesota and stuff like that. Then they would, uh, this would allow them to drain out the water if they weren't gonna be using it for a long time. Then over here, got the magneto, of course. This is a governor and a coupling for those. The governor, when it runs, it actually goes over here, pushes the switch. That tells the machine that it's up to speed so it can kick in the load. It's got an electric choke, so this little lever goes up and down. That's run by this, so when you're starting it, that lever will pop up. Then got a watt meter put on here. That's pretty nice since it's only 15 amps, so if it goes up about to the center, it's about all I can do. Uh, actually, I think it's rated, yeah, 13 amps, but there's a, the nameplate. I'll throw a good picture of that in there for you. If you got one of these and you want to run it manually because the electric starts broken or whatever, you have to unhook this, this bottom wire here, which is the, the ground to the magneto. And then it will go ahead and uh, start for you. Of course, to shut it down, then you'll have to ground that wire. And this box has the automatic start mechanism in it, of course. I got my batteries here. 
and I just have old jerry can for, well, this is actually a new jerry can for uh, my fuel. I set this up so if I want to change barrels while it's running, I can just pull that out, put a new jug on there, and it'll keep going. It runs fine while you change it out. That's not a problem at all. So I think that's about it. It's a real nice, real, uh, real neat machine. I like having it around here. And it's pretty handy, like when I had that power outage. Got to run my refrigerator for a while. That's all I got on this. Thanks for watching.